I'm going to show you how to set up an additional domain controller on an existing Active Directory domain. So to start, I've already got a fully functioning Active Directory domain, and I've set up a fresh server, which we're going to promote as an additional domain controller. And I'm currently logged on to that server now. And the only thing I've done is within Server Manager, is set a custom host name for this server, as well as giving it a static IP address that I want this additional domain controller to have. Once I've set up those two options, the next thing we want to do is within Server Manager, come up to Manage, and then select Add Roles and Features. Within the Feature Wizard, we can click Next, select Role-based or Feature-based installation, and then select Next. Select our new server that we're going to promote to a domain controller, and then select Next. And now we can select our Active Directory domain services. So for this domain controller, we want to select Active Directory domain services, we want to make sure all the management tools are included and then press add features. And I also want to make this domain controller a DNS server. So we'll select DNS server, make sure the management tools are included and then press add features. We can then select next, make sure group policy management is selected and then select next. And then we can just keep clicking next through the wizard. On the confirmation page, we can see that we've got Active Directory domain services going to be installed, DNS server, group policy management and the remote server administration tools. Now we just need to press install to install these features. Now that the installation is finished, we can either press promote the server to a domain controller, or if you've already closed the wizard, we can come up to the notification flag and then select promote the server to a domain controller. In the deployment configuration wizard, we've got a couple of options. So we can add a domain controller to an existing domain. We can add a new domain to an existing forest, or we can add a new forest. In this case, we've already got an existing Active Directory domain, so we want to select Add a Domain Controller to an existing domain. Under Domain, we can enter our domain name. So in my case, it's ad.danielmoran.com. We can then press Select, and then it will ask us for some credentials. These credentials are used to authenticate against the domain. So in this case, I will use my Domain Administrator account. So my domain is ad.danielmoran.com. And then I want to use the Administrator account. And then I will enter the password for that account and then press OK. We can then select our domain and then press OK. And then we can press Next through the wizard. We want to leave this domain controller as a DNS server and a global catalog. However, we don't want it to be a read-only domain controller, so we will leave the last option unticked. If you've set up your Active Directory site, you can select the site here. I'm going to leave this as the default site. And then we can enter a DSRM password. I'd recommend that you make a note of this password, because if you ever need to restore the domain controller, you will need to enter it. Once I've entered the password, we'll press Next. On the DNS options, we can't make any changes here, so then we'll press Next. We can then select a domain controller to replicate from. I'm just going to leave this as any domain controller, and then press Next. We've then got the option to specify the location for our database folder, log files folder, and sysfile folder. I'm going to leave these as default, however you can change these to a different drive if that's a requirement. We can then press Next. We can then review our options. So this is all the options we've selected. And then press Next. It will then do a prerequisite check. In this case, it's come back saying prerequisite check complete or prerequisite checks passed successfully. You will get a DNS delegation error, but that's because the server is not yet a DNS server. So we can ignore that warning and then just press Install. Once we press Install, the wizard will automatically make this a domain controller. It will install all the required roles and features, and then it will reboot the server once it's done. Now the server's rebooted, it's took us back to the logon screen, and then we'll now want to log in with a domain account. I'm going to log in with the domain administrator. Once it's logged in and server manager has opened, I'm going to go up to tools and then open Active Directory users and computers. In here, we'll just open up our Active Directory domain, and we'll just make sure all our objects have synchronized. I can see that the users and the built-in have all synchronized. And if we come to domain controllers, we can see we've got our two domain controllers, the primary domain controller and the domain controller that we have just promoted. What we'll also want to check is if we come back to server manager, come up to tools and then open up DNS. This will take us to our DNS management console. And if we select our secondary domain controller and then come to the forward lookup zones, it should have replicated all of our active directory zones. And we can see that we've got our correct records. The last thing we want to do is if we come back to server manager and select local server we can select our ethernet adapter and then select our active ethernet adapter and then come to properties and then internet protocol version 4 we can see that it's made our primary domain controller the preferred dns server 
and it set itself to the alternate DNS server using the local loopback address. Once we've confirmed those settings are correct, we can then close our adapter. So now we've got two domain controllers set up on our Active Directory domain. So that's how you can set up an additional Active Directory domain controller and DNS server and connect them to an additional Active Directory domain.